Hello guys, my name is Khan and actually in today's video we will discuss about conditional tabs. So what does it mean by conditional tabs? Before starting about conditional tabs, you guys may remember that we have uh, created multiple tabs in our main panel in our previous in our, in our previous video. Uh, so first I will discuss, actually I have created two board files. So one is the main tabs and the other one is the uh, is actually the second core file is the same as the above but I have added the functionality of conditioning but first I open my main panel tabs code file in which I have created multiple uh, tabs in my main panel so actually I have already discussed this uh, this part of the code that how you can add multiple tabs in your in your main panel but uh, for this video I will talk about again about it a bit in detail so so first what i will do uh, i will execute this code control a and then i will run this app to show what this code is doing so actually we constructed this uh, dashboard with the help of that code so you can see here the thing here is that we have three tabs here results and result tabs we have just graph here and then you can see this select input is also getting attached with this thing and then we have stats i have reported some table here and then i have data tab but the important thing to note here is that the result tab this graph is associated with with this select input so this graph is associated with this select input and if i go to my stats so in my remarks tab if i write down something like uh, suppose looks good so you can see it's written down here and if i go back to, go to data tab if this select input tab if I select my ear this table got adjusted according to the ear but the, the thing to note here is that as a user I don't want to see other uh, select inputs or uh, input options uh, for the given tab for this tab the only thing uh, which is important is this thing because this thing is linked with this table and for stats this remark table uh, text input is related to this tab and this result uh, in the result tab this animated uh, select, uh, select input is related to this graph but uh, uh, but as you can see that as I'm going to different tabs my sidebar panel remains static how you can adjust your sidebar panel according to the tab so in this video mainly we will see that how we can adjust our sidebar panel according to the tab where in which we are so suppose in data tab we want to see only this select input in result tab we will we all only want to see this slider input and the, and then for the stats tab we only want to see this uh, text input because the text input is printed in stats under the result tab this uh, this uh, this input is uh, valid whereas for the data this select input is valid so let's go back to the code so i will quickly go through the code what we did here and then i will go i will tell you guys that how we can adjust this code to to make our sidebar panel dynamic and, and our sidebar options got updated according to the panel we are so we are using a data file in a c which is in the csv format then i am defining a ui object then i am using the again the shiny ui function within that i will be using shiny page and then i am giving a title to my page i'm going quickly because i have already gone to these functionalities uh, previously so many times so i want my uh, then i put in my sidebar layout option i want the position of my sidebar on the right hand side 
then I have used used uh, that my sidebar panel title I have given that key, and within my sidebar panel I have used the slider input, and in order to make it animate, I have used the animate is equal to true within it here, uh, and after that I also have used the select input and select input to adjust my data table and then i have used this diff functions to give some spacing between select input and text input and my text input is here and under my main panel i have reported the following things so under the, my main panel i want to create three tabs so that that's why i have used tab set panel function and within that we are using the type equal to tabs and within each type i have given three tab panels so within tab set panel we have select i've used tab panel three times and for each tab panel first thing is that i am naming that tab so the first tab is reserved the second tab is the stats and the third is data and after naming the tab i am telling what I want to be shown in that tab. So the first tab I want to show text output out here, which we have created in our server. And then I also want to show the plot output. So as you remember that we are showing one bar graph in our result tab. Whereas in the second tab, I want to show stats. And in order to show stats of a result, I'm using this function. And then I'm calling that function, which I have created in uh, server and after that I also have shown a text output because in my stats I also want to show the text output whatever I will write down in my text input I want to show it in the stats tab and then I also have in my third tab data tab I just want to show the table output which is containing the data so this is what we have done actually this is almost very much the same thing that i have covered in my previous video in which we talk about how to create uh, multiple tabs in your main panel so i think just for the safe side if there are users those who haven't uh, seen that video i will also cover the shiny server side so under the server side i have render table that i will be showing that i will be capturing under out data and then i'm and then i'm showing that output data in my data tab as you can see it here and in the same way i have used a table function so table is actually is a kind of a summary table which is got captured in order to capture it i'm using render print and in order to print it in under the stats, I am using uh, this function. So if you are using some function like summary function, table function, frequency function, you can use render print and then you, in order to print that uh, output of your function, you can use this function uh, to put to print it in your main panel. But here we are putting it into our within the main panel. We are putting it in the, the tab, pan, tab panel of stats. And then I have used different other render tags. But the important thing is that we also have created a graph. So I am rendering a plot, naming it as imp underscore rate using this data set. Then I am subsetting it based on the input year, which is coming from our slider input as you can see as the slider keeps on moving this thing keeps on adjusting and our bar plot will keep on adjusting this thing are all happening because render plot function is reactive so whatever if there is a change happening in your input functions like slider input this part of the code will keep on adjusting so again i will quickly run the app again one last time and then i will show you guys that uh, how we can add conditionality that my sidebar panel keeps on adjusting according to the tab we are so currently i'm in the result tab but for this tab only the slider input is valid uh, not this function select input and remark 
uh, input sorry this text input have nothing to do with this tab but still i'm seeing these these two options to here so and for the stats only this thing is applicable and for the data only the year for the select input is valid so i only want to see i want to see my sidebar according to the tab i have so let's see how we can do it so i will save it and close it i will go back to my folder where i have already constructed another code file which is actually derived from my above code file and i have adjusted a feature added a feature in that code file that how you can make your sidebar panel uh, dynamic so i will maximize it into a separate window so this is the code this is almost the same code but i have made some changes in it so i will go through the way i have made it with changes the above thing the things above this code is almost the same as the code we have discussed before but the important thing to note here is that under the sidebar panel i have using the conditional panel but before discussing the sidebar panel i will quickly go take you guys to the main panel first so as you can see that in the tab set panel if i go back to my code to my main window under the help if i search tab set panel you can see here if i make it into a separate window so under the tab set panel there is an option id which is by default is null and selected is also null so what is these options are so in, actually this id option allows you to identify each tab so here what i have done is i have assigned an id tab selected so and so tab selected is a is an id which will which will get its values from the tab you have selected and in the tab panel you can see that all the things remain the same i have named the tab i have added the things that i want to see in the tab but here i also have added one thing value is equal to one so so when i will be in this tab the value will be equal to one and this value will be get assigned to this id tab selected id so this id is named as tab selected and its value will become one when i will be in the result tab so i will quickly also take you to the tab panel help if i write down here tab panel so this is the help of tab panel i can open it into a separate window again you can see that the value here you can assign it to a value i will be assigning it to a value of one uh, by default the value is uh, zero so i'll go back so in the same way what i have done is i have added an id and then i also have added for each tab a unique value so for the first tab it's one for the second is two and for the third is three you can define it the the more important thing is that you assign a unique value so it's not necessary that you assign one two and three you can assign whatever number but that number should be unique for each tab panel and in the end what i have also done within my tab set panel that selected is equal to two so what is does it mean so the selected is equal to two means that when i will run this code the default tab that will be selected will be the second tab it will be the stats tab the by default the selected is null so you have to assign some tab value here otherwise you may get an error so therefore i have selected tab 2 you can also select tab 1 therefore in order to select the result tab as a default tab you need to assign one here so let me i think before discussing the above part let's run the app and show you that how it's what, what it's doing so you can see that because of that selected to i am the first tab is shown to me is the stats tab which is the second tab 
and for this tab I am only seeing the, this text input because the text input is only relative uh, option here so I can if I write down something you can see it's written down here but if I now move to the result tab my sidebar panel will get updated as you can see for the result tab only the slider input option is valid and if I play it my graph scheme for adjusted because this part of uh, this sidebar or uh, slider input is only valid for this tab and for my data tab I can I'm only seeing this select input if I uh, select any other option my table got updated according to select uh, the selection I have made so so the first thing I have done is I have changed my main panel according and I have assigned some values to my each value. I have assigned each a new a unique value to my tab panel because I will be using those values in my when I will be using conditional panel function which I am using under my sidebar panel. So under my sidebar panel as you can see I am first use the function conditional panel and then I am using the giving the condition. So under the condition, I'm saying select input. We in our previous video we used a do, a dollar here, but it's an HTML part of the code. That's why we are using a dot here. And then I am calling the input ID we have created tab selected here, which is we created in tabs panel. And we say if that ID is equal to one, then give this heading and also add this slider input so for this for the first tab we are saying that if the id is equal to one or the value of this id is equal to one only use these uh, select input or sidebar options and then i have given my second conditional panel so i'm saying but important thing to note here is this thing all happening under the sidebar panel and then i'm saying conditional panel and i'm giving my condition again and now the condition is three because i'm talking about my third uh, my stats uh, my stats uh, tab which have only need to be have select input sorry i'm talking about my data tab uh, under my data tab uh, here the sequence is a bit different way but we, i'm just mm, calling three here first and then two in the later i'm saying use the select input when i'm in the data tab and in my and i am then i am giving my third condition panel option that if I, the option is two it's mean when i will be in the stats tab only put the text input button there and the good thing is that we don't need to make any change in our server so again if i run this app you can see that everything my sidebar panel what keeps on adjusting when i according to my main panel tabs so the good thing about this thing is that you don't need to show input buttons or input options which are not related to the given tab so suppose you are done uh, we are done with uh, uh, making condition panels function here but suppose if you want to publish this app i am uh, telling you guys again how to publish your app because for this app if you go back to my folder we are using this data in our, my previous video we published our app but we didn't use any folder uh, so in order to publish so we didn't use any data so in this in this app we have used our data so therefore i will let you know how you can publish your, your app again so in order to publish your app the first thing is that we need to make uh, two files a ui file and a server file so first what I will do, I will close my windows here, I will close the code here, 
and now what I will do, I will just, so this is the code that we are using which is creating conditional panels. Uh, I will copy this code two times, so, sorry, I will I copy this and pasted it twice and the first copy I named it as UI and then I renamed my second copy as server. And after that, what I did will do is that I will under my UI code file, I will keep only the UI part of the code. I will open it up, maximize it, and under my this I'm printing my UI.r, so I don't need this server part. So I will delete it. I will delete it and another important thing is that we don't need this working directory for when we will be publishing our app so I will delete it. if you will not delete it you will get an error so that's why I'm deleting it everything looks fine now I will keep save it close it now I have adjusted my UF file now I will go to my server file Again, if you notify your working directory when you will be constructing your uh, Shiny app uh, and once it comes to launch your app, publish your app, uh, it's a good, it's always recommended not to mention working directory. It will give you an error while publishing. So again, I have removed my working directory. I'm in currently in server, so I don't need the UA part of the code. So I will delete the UI part and I will also delete this shiny app. Uh, when you are constructing your app, you, we, it's a good idea that you construct your UI and the server part of the code both in the same code file. But when you have to publish your app, you need to have UI part of your code and server part of the code in separate code file. So I will delete that too. If, because once you will be constructing your app, uh, it's, it's a good thing that everything is in the same code file and once you made uh, everything right, then it's very easy that you make the UI file and the server file in the end and then it will uh, reduce your hassle of keeps on going from UI to server or server to UI file again and again. That's why I construct both my UI and the server part within the same code file. And then once it's time to publish my code, I at that stage I quickly create two code files, UI and the server at that stage. So I will save it. So my UI, my UI part is also ready. My server part is also ready. Now if just for the final time I will run it to see that everything is going fine. As you can see that everything is fine. Everything is running accordingly. So now I can publish my app. So because in that folder I have both UA and the server.r file. So let's say publish. And I will for now this is an important thing. It the folder which I am currently here is is in the conditional tabs folder. So the folder which you have constructed will be considered as the title of your uh, of your shiny app. Uh, so if you can also change your title here if you want so but I am happy with the uh, title here but by default it will take the title of your shiny app based on the folder name where you where you have located your server and UI file and the important thing is that for this shiny app the UI file is important the server.r is important there is no need to because these files are redundant now while publishing and important thing is that this data file which we are calling in UI file and the server file you also have to select your data file otherwise you will get an error I will publish it so it start doing deploying my app so again it's just an important uh, while it's deploy our app 
the important thing is when you will be constructing ui.r file and the server.r file always make sure that you uh, you deleted the working directory otherwise you may get an error while deploying your app and another thing to note here is that if you want to see other options in the tab panel there is an options if you search under the help tab panel uh, there is a good description about tab panel i think it's just going to launch our app now we just have to wait a few more seconds and once the if if if, if our application got deployed successfully uh, our shiny will open our app into a separate uh, into a separate window in our browser So yes, you can see now that uh, this app got deployed. So this is the link we got created. And you can share this link with any other users if they want and they will be able to interact with this app the way we were interacting in with the help of RStudio. So you can see that we are in our browser and we can, uh, if I play this button, so my graphs keeps on getting adjusted and my stats tab so if i write down any remark uh, working well so you can see that it's got written down here and if i select my so all the features are working properly i'm just checking so another important thing that i like to show you guys that suppose if you want to uh, uh, manage your app so how to do it so if I if you go to your browser and if you search shiny app so if you go because we have launched it through shiny apps.io if I go to that page I sign up um, I've already signed up with Google so select my account which i'm using for this this is the account that i'm using it will take me to the page where all my apps are so it's showing me that i have one running app which we have uh, constructed currently so and the second app that we have created in our previous video so if you guys want to manage those apps you can manage it very easily suppose if i want to delete this app i will click it and paste here or i think based on my application running a sleeping so i will go to my sleeping app so here you can see i have a delete button so if i select delete it it's showing me are you sure you want to delete it so, so I have to, okay i want to delete it so my application got deleted and now if i go to my running app this is my running app so if you suppose if you forgot about your url you can come here select it here and from here you can manage your app and you can also select your url again here and it will take you back to your app which you have constructed so in this video we have discussed how you can create conditioning uh, how you can add conditionality in your sidebar panel and and we also discussed that how you can publish your app uh, which have which which is also getting some data so thank you for watching the video